All right. Welcome to Military Images Live. Uh, this is Ron Coddington, the editor and publisher of Military Images Magazine. We're America's only magazine uh, that's solely dedicated to Civil War portrait photography of soldiers and sailors. We're going to hang on a couple of minutes so that folks can join us. I see Michael Passaro is with us. Uh, Doug York is here. Hello, Doug. We'll be talking uh, um, about a great partnership we have uh, coming up with Doug shortly. Uh, hey there. Uh, Mr. Wolf, Rick Wolf is here. How are you doing tonight? Hope everybody is doing well. More folks coming on board. I see a thumbs up from Michael. <laughs> Good evening, Doug. Uh, we've got uh, a couple things to talk about tonight. And uh, we'll get started in just another minute or so. Uh, while we're waiting for folks to come on, you can take a look at the uh, lead file that we have here on the screen. Uh, this is for the Civil War Faces photo show and sale, which I'm quite excited about. Uh, this is a, um, an event coming up in Arlington, Virginia, uh, in the Metro Washington, D.C. area. And um, I'm hoping that all of you that live in the Virginia, the Maryland, the DC area can come over and uh, attend the show that we're gonna be having. I see Mike Warner is here. Uh, Gene is here. Uh, Gene, you could be at this photo show. <laughs> uh, if you can possibly make it, we would love to have you. So uh, we'll get started by saying that this is a partnership with Doug York. For those of you who are fans of uh, Civil War Faces and Civil War Faces Marketplace. Uh, Military Images is teaming up with the great work that, uh, with Doug and the great work that he has done with uh, those Facebook pages to uh, be sponsors, to be co-sponsors of the Civil War Faces photo show and sale. This is a first ever event that we're having and um, it's in partnership with the DC Photo and Postcard Show which is an annual event that's been held for something like the last 35 years. I believe this is the 36th annual event. So this year, uh, Doug and I are um, sponsoring a room. We're going to have about a dozen dealers and um, you can come on Sunday, uh, March 10th and uh, shop and find what we hope is gonna be some fantastic images, uh, something for you to come home with. And uh, there's more though. Um, as those of you know who attend the shows regularly, uh, you can hang out, you can interact with the photo community, you can learn a lot about what's going on in the world of Civil War photography collecting and meet folks just like you who are interested in learning more about these amazing historic images. So we want to offer a little bit more than that. So uh, we've got two other events that are planned around that weekend. The first event happens on Friday, March 8th. We're having a tour, a behind the scenes tour of the Library of Congress. And uh, we'll join one of their curators there who is going to show us um, a bunch of unique and rare images from the Library of Congress's collection. That happens at 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna be posting all of these details here uh, on this Facebook page. And of course, you can also find this information uh, on Doug York's Civil War Faces and Civil War Faces Marketplace. We also have a special groups page for the Civil War Photo Show. So we'll be uh, looking, looking to put all that information on there. So Friday afternoon is the Library of Congress event. So you're gonna wanna contact Doug or contact me if you're interested in being on that list. Seating, is, or I'm, I should say attendance is limited. So we're gonna to have to hear from you. The other event happens on Saturday night, and um, that is a group of speakers. Uh, Doug and I are, call, are calling it Civil War Photo Talks. And we've invited five speakers from the DC area to talk about Civil War photography. And those individuals are Anne Schumard, who is a curator at the National Portrait Gallery. She's gonna talk, be talking about their photo collection, their Civil War photo collection, which really began to grow in 1976. So she'll talk about roughly 40 years of Civil War photography. 
Uh, then we're going to have Micah, uh, let me get Micah's last name correct, uh, Micah Messenheimer from the Library of Congress. Uh, Micah is going to be talking more about their amazing collection. For those of you who are on the tour, we'll get some highlights, but Micah will be talking more about this on Saturday night. Uh, following that, we're going to have Dr. Kurt Luther. Um, those of you who are fans of the magazine and fans of Civil War Faces uh, are probably very familiar with Civil War Photo Sleuth, that, the site that Kurt started uh, last year. That's the site that uses face recognition uh, and, of course, some classic photo sleuthing techniques to hopefully, in Kurt's words, is to identify every Civil War soldier photograph. Uh, Kurt's going to be speaking about Civil War photo sleuth and talking to us about what he's finding, what's happening out there, and most importantly, how you can become involved. Two more speakers are going to be at the show. Uh, Brian Cheeseboro uh, from the National Archives. He's going to be talking about uh, one of the super, super rare occurrences at the National Archives, and that is finding Civil War photographs from pension files. He's going to be telling some stories about some of the greatest finds that have come out of the archives. The last speaker is Rick Brown. And uh, those of you who know Rick, he's a senior uh, editor at Military Images. And um, Rick is going to be talking about what you should be, what he thinks about when he's collecting photographs, talking about the aesthetics, talking about the social meaning behind these photographs, various aspects of the uniforms. So we'll take a look at some images from Rick's collection, and he's going to give us some perspectives on uh, really why these images are so important to all of us and why they're important to American history. So again, all of that's happening on Saturday night, March 9th, between 6 and 9. All of this is happening in Arlington, Virginia, uh, at the Holiday Inn uh, in Roslyn, which is right near the Key Bridge headed to Georgetown. So again, if you're in the area uh, and can make the Friday, the Friday event at the Library of Congress, the Saturday night talks, or the show on Sunday, we want to hear from you. And again, we'll post this information on this website, and we'll be talking about it more in the days and weeks coming up to the events. So stay tuned for more. Now, Last week, last two weeks actually, uh, the highlight for me was going to the Chickamauga Civil War show in Dalton, Georgia. And uh, there's a bunch of reasons that uh, military images makes appearances at these shows. And I want to give you a little sense of what a normal show is like for me. In this case, as always, I try to stop by uh, and see other collectors along the way. And in this case, I drove to Atlanta, Georgia on Friday when most folks were coming in town for the Super Bowl. I was coming in town to see David Vaughn. And those of you who know David are familiar with his collection of Georgians. And you may be familiar with it for two reasons. Uh, examples of his Georgia Confederate collection were at the amazing Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, their Civil War show uh, back in 2000. And 11 uh, to celebrate the sesquicentennial. And you've also seen his images previously in Military Images magazine, including uh, 2004, when we had a whole gallery of his work. David, of course, has continued to collect, and he's continued to amass an amazing collection. So I got to spend uh, the better part of a long afternoon hanging out with David. We had lunch together, and we looked at photographs. And I made a bunch of scans, and a bunch of them are going to be showing up in our summer issue. So I want to show a few of those scans just to give you a little bit of sense uh, of what he has and what I was able to see while I was there. This one, uh, many of you who uh, know the exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art recognize this photograph of four Georgians possibly one of the, definitely one of the most iconic Confederate images that you'll see. Here's one that I thought was fantastic. Uh, this is a group of Georgians with, uh, in, uh, I think it's mostly officers who served in Clinch's rifles. 
If you look closely, you'll see the ornamental tent. There is a straw hat that is hanging on the pole in the background. All the officers are sitting around in front. We'll be talking more about this image in the gallery for sure. All right. When was the last time you saw members of the Confederate Signal Corps? Uh, raise your hand if you have, uh, talk about rare. These are extremely rare. David has three of these images that are part of his collection. We'll certainly be talking about them. And then I've got a series of just some great portraits. And uh, as you're looking through these, Remember, these are all Georgians. Uh, they came from all walks of life from across the state. Um, you've got men like this, this gentleman who looks to be a little older than the average Civil War soldier, uh, served as a sergeant, as you can see by his stripes. Here's a gentleman, particularly interesting uh, I, uh, some folks might see this and think that he has a battle shirt on and I'm, or a hunting shirt. I'm not really quite sure, but it looks like something of a casual work shirt. Uh, pinned to his chest is the letter G, which I suspect is his company letter. You can see that right over here. Uh, he has a, uh, a waist belt on with his buckle and he has a revolver tucked into it. Certainly a man who looks like he means business. Another Georgia Confederate is this gentleman here. He's got his a hat folded up on the sides. Uh, he's holding a smaller knife. Um, he's got a, a bayonet in his other hand. More to come, details about his story. Uh, and then here's an image that I thought was uh, especially powerful. Uh, he's holding a Bowie knife. He has his revolver pressed against his chest, wearing a broad brim dark hat. And um, you'll notice he has his gray, probably a gray or a butternut color jacket. And um, you'll see the trim, the interesting cuff trim and the buttons that he has around there. Um, I'm seeing from all the emojis going up right now, this, this is, uh, <laughs> yes, there's even more coming on now. This is a pretty amazing image, and uh, we'll have more to come in David's gallery. Uh, just so you know, we have a lot of research to do. David has done some research, and we'll do more. So each image really gets a thorough going over as we try to better understand uh, what he was wearing, uh, and if we know his name, try to understand why he was wearing it and what happened to him. So. That was the first day. We hadn't even got to the show yet. Um, so I left David's uh, place after looking at his photographs, drove up to Dalton on Friday afternoon, and uh, started to meet and greet some of the dealers there, and uh, did some scans on Friday. And then when we had the public show on Saturday and Sunday, more of you came by, dealers came by and brought their stuff. And so there was a lot more scanning to be done. There is far more scans than I have time to show you uh, tonight, but I wanted to go over uh, just, just a sampling to give you a sense of, of what's going on. Um, one of them is in the Scott Vizeau collection. And uh, this is, talk about uh, rare images. I mentioned the Confederate Signal Corps uh, soldiers earlier. Here's a Marine, uh, a Marine corporal. Uh, I've seen um, some number of images of Marine officers, but non-commissioned officers and enlisted men, I find really difficult uh, to find. So here we have a corporal. You'll see um, he's identified all of his information is on the back. He's presented this to a friend of his. You've got a couple of revenue stamps on it, which tells us that it was made somewhere between late 1864 and the fall of 1866. So as always, what you're looking at here is sort of military images first draft of history. Uh, we haven't researched any of this uh, yet, but we certainly will. And you'll see, you'll, you will probably see this image in a future issue. 
The other group of images I want to show you um, comes from the Rick Carlisle collection. Uh, I'd mentioned to Rick that uh, I was hoping to do a few galleries based on musicians because I've made a number of musician scans at various shows over the last few years. And uh, Rick came over to the military images table uh, with a small box in his hand, uh, an elastic band around it. I recognize the box, he's brought it to me before. And I know what was inside that box was a bunch of goodies. And uh, this time around, it was carts to visit of musicians. So one of them I posted uh, from the show, and um, it's this uh, gentleman, uh, a horn player, and um, he's dressed in his Veteran Reserve Corps uniform. And we know this because we can see some of the, it certainly is a light colored uniform. Whoops, technical problem. Uh, it's a light colored uniform and um, it has been tinted blue. So you can get a sense uh, of the, uh, and also the very thick stripe on his pants also tells us that he's a member of the VRC. This gentleman here has a unique palm uh, on top of his cap. Uh, he's holding drumsticks. We don't see his drum, but we see his drumsticks. He has his classic uh, bandsman's uniform with the uh, pleats across his jacket, the triple rows of buttons. On the banister, you can see his overcoat. A wonderful photograph. Speaking of drummers, here's the classic uh, image of a drummer. He has his drum at his side. He's got the sticks on the drum head. He's looking straight ahead as if he's ready to uh, bring everybody to attention and bring them in line and begin the march on campaign. He also has what appears to be a, quite a nice leather belt, uh, a very shiny leather um, that is holding that drum over his shoulder. Have a bugler. Ah, more technical issues tonight. Uh, we have a bugler. Um, he's posing with a saber. Uh, he's got his cap on a table next to him. You can see the horn, the bugle is sitting right up there next to him. Here's another soldier with a bugle. And uh, you can see he's holding this. He's got the tassels on it. Um, he has uh, his shoulder guards, his brass shoulder guards up there. He's got a revolver tucked into his, uh, his waist belt, and he's also carrying a sword. One more bugler. In terms of uh, image quality, this one is practically flawless. Uh, he's resting his hands on his saber. He's got his bugle, and he's got a strap. Um, it looks actually it's more like a string that's around his shoulder. And uh, it looks like he's ready for action. Wonderful image. All right. Now, you may also wonder, uh, we will sometimes find mysteries that we need to solve at these shows. And um, one of them comes from uh, a, actually a gun collector named Garrett Glover. So um, Garrett came up to me towards the end of the show with this image. Get that there for you. Uh, wow. This was uh, on Sunday. Um, actually, I believe it was, I take that back, it was late Saturday, and then we talked again on Sunday. It's these four infantrymen, and um, someone brought it in um, and offered it for sale to Garrett, and um, he couldn't resist. And the image comes with a story. And here's Garrett's uh, email. I asked him to send me an email. And he said, um, the fellow who sold me the quarter plate tintype in question told me that the men belonged to the Musser family and that they lived in Orangeville, Illinois. So pretty big clue there. Uh, he also uh, did a little bit of research in the couple of days since he communicated with me. There we go. All right. And... Um, he found a bunch 
of gentlemen from this area with the last name Musser. Uh, and since Garrett is a gun collector, he also informed me that all these gentlemen are carrying British uh, 1853 rifle muskets. And interestingly, they were issued to the 46th Illinois uh, Infantry, which happens to come from the Orangeville, Illinois area. So we have Mussers in Orangeville. We have a connection for the, the Enfield rifle musket to the 46th Illinois, uh, which is from that area. And um, interestingly, all of the, or uh, the bulk of those uh, 1853 Enfields were issued to Company A. And so is it possible that these guys are from Company A of the 46th Infantry with the last name of Musser? So this is a work in progress. We're going to try to figure some of that out. But what I did uh, with Garrett's permission is I took this scan and put the individual images onto Civil War Photo Sleuth. And I didn't get any hits for uh, the, first, the first man in the picture. I didn't get any hits for this man who is, the, uh, is an officer, but the three enlisted men were kind of interesting. Uh, the second guy is actually, the second guy in line is actually right here. And when I added the third person, this guy came up as the first result in Civil War photo sleuths. So it's pretty clear to me that there is a connection between these two guys. And since this guy was the first hit on this man's photograph, it's reasonable to assume that they may very well have been brothers. They certainly have a very similar resemblance to each other. Possible they could have been cousins. So, even gets more interesting. The last guy in line, go back here. Uh, the last guy, look, the last guy in line, I put his photograph into Civil War Photo Sleuths, and he also came up on the first page of results uh, un uh, as an unidentified soldier, but he bears a resemblance to the first guy as well. So he didn't show up number one in the results page. I think he was down around number 13, but he showed up in the results. So clearly these three guys all bear some connection, uh, sorry, all bear a connection to each other. And so we're gonna try to do some more research. If anyone has an image of anyone named Musser that served in the 46th Illinois or another Illinois regiment, we definitely wanna know about this. I'm gonna put this image on our Facebook page, and I'm hoping that uh, you guys can help uh, find a connection so that we can solve this mystery. So uh, we certainly live to try to solve these kinds of mysteries when we go to the shows. We also go to the shows to get story ideas, and here's one of them. Uh, this is an amazing albumin portrait of a gentleman named Abner Dodge Stover. And um, uh, Stover was an ensign in the Navy, and um, he happened to be on board a fairly well-known gunboat named the Water Witch. And those of you who are familiar with Navy history have a good sense of that vessel and its activity during the war. Uh, one of the best known incidents connected with the Water Witch is when it was captured by Confederates. And uh, this image of Stover happens to come with a journal, a diary. And that diary was written in a letter book. So it was roughly eight and a half by 11 in size. And it was filled with all of his daily entries. And he records with amazing clarity uh, and a very cogent narrative he talks about what it was like for the Water Witch to be boarded by Confederates. He also describes the fight that happened to keep those Confederates from taking over the ship. Uh, I won't go into all the details because I want to save it for the story that's going to appear in our summer issue, but I can tell you it's some of the most riveting detail of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, I've seen stories and accounts of hand-to-hand -hand fighting, but nothing quite like this. 
So stay tuned to get a sense of uh, action that happened in the US Navy when the Water Witch was boarded by Confederate soldiers. Another story idea that came to me, we had two gentlemen stop by the table at different times. They both are connected to this place. Uh, it's in uh, the eastern part of Tennessee. Uh, it's the General Longstreet Headquarters Museum. You can see the house in the background where Longstreet spent, I believe it was uh, 35 days uh, from December 1863 to January 1864 while they're making their way back from Tennessee up to Virginia. And um, uh, I talked to uh, two gentlemen, uh, Mike Beck and uh, Richard Ford, and uh, they told me all these fascinating anecdotes about what that 35 days was like in East Tennessee. Um, you're after the siege of Chattanooga, you've got the siege of Knoxville that's going on, and Longstreet's core is trying to figure out um, and participate in some of what's going on. So there's a lot of information here. And uh, as I talked to Mike and Richard, started to get a sense of the fact that there might be a story here if we can find images that are connected to some of the stories that they've collected. So I'm gonna post uh, here some of the names, and some of these names are names that you know. Uh, James Longst or Longstreet himself, Lafayette McClaws, Joseph Kershaw, Benjamin Humphreys, Moxley Sorrell, Osmond Latrobe, Thomas Gorey, John Fairfax, Charles Blackford. Uh, I'm going to put these names out there for you. I'm looking for images. I'm looking for original images of these guys so we can do a story about uh, East Tennessee, uh, Longstreet's headquarters, and shine a light on a part of the country that uh, maybe hasn't got quite as much attention. And um, that's a big issue for me with Military Images Magazine. I wanna be able to tell some of these unknown stories of parts of the war that typically don't get quite as much coverage. So more to come on that. Now, I should also tell you that some of the images uh, that we scan, like this pretty amazing image, uh, from a New York regiment is uh, they wind up um, being in other publications as well. We certainly publish our share in military images, but we also get contacted by other magazines, uh, Civil War Times, the Civil War Monitor. Uh, we work with those guys to help them find images of certain soldiers, certain regiments. And um, this is one of those images here. If you subscribe to Civil War Times Magazine, you will see this image. I believe it's going to be the next issue. So uh, Melissa Wynn, if you're out there, hello tonight. Uh, Melissa contacted me looking for this photo. She had seen in a back issue of military images and uh, just so happens that I had scanned it, again, from the Rick Carlisle collection, the guy who had all the musician photographs. And um, uh, Rick was able to give permission and so the rest is history. Speaking of early issues of the magazine, I've got one more photo to leave with you, leave with you for tonight. And um, here it is. This comes from one of our, our earliest issues. Uh, actually, it's our sixth issue ever published, and we're over 200 now. Uh, this is from the May-June 1980 issue uh, of Military Images Magazine. And um, the gen gentleman um, pictured here is William H. Harding uh, with the 5th Ohio Cavalry. This image was uh, part of the collection of Bob McDonald. And uh, Bob, as it so happens, had a huge collection and was a generous supporter of Military Images Magazine back in those early days. So last week, I got an email from Judy Barber, and uh, Judy is uh, trying to find out more information. Turns out that uh, uh, Private Harding is um, one of her ancestors. 
and she was really trying to track down a copy of that photograph. Uh, and so I thought, well, let's see what we can do. It turns out that one Robert McDonald is still a subscriber uh, to military images uh, 40 years after the magazine started. So I contacted Bob and asked him if he was the same Bob McDonald who donated uh, or shared his image for the cover of military images back in May and June of 1980. And fortunately it was. Uh, and um, uh, Bob, in fact, had an original um, uh, photo of the photo. So he was able to share this image, um, which is, you can see the cropped image on the cover. There is actually the full uh, tintype in all of its glory. So the good news is that Bob had this image to share. The not so good news is that he sold his entire collection some years ago. And so this image is currently out there. We don't know who the owner is. So um, we're trying to find out who has this image in their possession. So I'm gonna post this image on Facebook and um, hoping that someone recognizes this, someone has seen it, and um, is either interested in sharing a better quality copy or at least reaching out to Judy Barber and telling her more about what you know about it. So uh, look for this image and a bunch of other stuff that I'm gonna post in just a few minutes after we wrap up. So I wanna remind you again, before we go, about uh, the Civil War Faces show and sale that's coming up, that's March 8th, 9th, and 10th. If you live in the metropolitan Washington area, up through Baltimore, or if you feel like making a drive or flying in uh, for the weekend, we would love to see you. Uh, we have the Library of Congress tour, we have Civil War photo talks, and of course the show itself. So I hope to see you there. And if you can make it fantastic, whatever you do, uh, I wish you happy hunting and happy finds. If you have any questions about things that you wanna talk about, want me to talk about on the show, contact me uh, through Facebook or through militaryimages at gmail.com. Thank you very much and have a great night. Until next time, take care. <laughs>